to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now, is this only a prayer, a wishful thinking? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibad rahman they only say that Allah give us the joy of eye only by words? Because if it's so, if it's only by word, it is not only the pious who say so. Even the evildoers, they would like their children to be pious. So this is not only pertaining to the pious people, to Ibad al-Rahman. Everyone wants his children to be nice. So the ayah here doesn't mean only verbally we say, Allah, give us good children. Allah, give me a nice son, a good daughter. No. In this ayah, this ayah means this. By diligent work, by careful planning, by preparation, and by good action, then you will end up having good children. So my speech tonight, brothers and sisters, is about the principles of raising children. How does Islam, Quran, ask us to raise our children after your salat? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. If you look at Islam, brothers and sisters, you see that it pays attention and gives importance to raising children much before the birth of children. Give them the right even before they are conceived. Preconception rights. It tells the husband and the wife to choose their own partners carefully. When you want to have a good child, first of all, you need to have a good start. Your start should be on the right step. Not just go and find anyone and get married with her or get married with him, and then you would like to have a pious children. No. The first step should be on the right track. When the first step is on the right track, then everything will go smoothly. So Islam says from the beginning, choose whom you would like to be the father or the mother of your child. The hadith says, Heredity is an important factor. Remember, brothers and sisters, this word had been said 1400 years ago. Nowadays, Science have realized that we pass our heredity, our traits, to our children. Back in 1860, there was a scientist called Mendel. I'm sure many of you have heard of his name. He came up with the heredity law. Based on a specific law, the father and the mother give their traits to the children. Half of our genes come from the father. The second half come from the mother. What is the gene? The gene is the trait that take our information from one cell to a second generation of cells. Or from the parents to the children. This is called the gene that carries this information. Half of our information in our body is coming from the mother. The second half is coming from the father, from the father. 1400 years ago, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, be careful. When you choose to have a great children, pious children, make sure that your spouse is a right spouse for yourself. Do not choose it arbitrarily. Just because you have fallen in love with your spouse before your marriage, then you think he or she is the best one. No. Think about it. Is this person is good to be the mother of the child or the father of the child? At that time, act upon that. So Islam pay attention to the children even before they are conceived. Once a child is conceived, his life is considered to be sacred, holy. You cannot abort the child. It is haram, it is illegal to abort any conceived child, even if it has 
couple cells. Once the sperm penetrate the egg, خلاص. You cannot do anything about it. And some ulama says, when it passes the first trimester, no, for no reason you can, the wife or the husband can abort the child. Some say maybe at the beginning, if the life of the mother is in jeopardy, then yes, you can. But after this first trimester, there is no reason you can abort the child for. Therefore, the life of the child, if from the very first minute that it is conceived, is considered to be very holy and sanctified. Now, once the child is born, there are many duties and many responsibilities on the shoulder of the father and the mother. Number one, Islam ensures that the child should have a good nutrition. And here it states in the Quran, وَالْوَالِدَاتِ يُرْضَعْنَ أَوْلَادَهُنَّ حَوْلَيْنِ كَامِلَيْنِ For two consecutive years, you have to give your child a good nutrition, a good food. Why? Because this child will be a useful member in the society. Now, if you do not give him at a critical stage of life, if you do not give him the proper food, if you do not give him the proper nutrition, then he will malfunction. Then instead of being a useful person in society, he will be paralyzed, and then he, will be, he becomes a burden on society. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for two years, the mother has to feed the child. The child should, of course, that doesn't mean it's a wajib only through nursing mother. What it means that he should have a proper nutrition. Even if they are divorced, the man and woman are divorced, the man's responsibility, the husband's responsibility to assure that the wife nurse the child for at least two years, even if he has to pay for that. This is how Islam pays so much attention to the life of the child. Now as he grows up, again, other things come. Other commands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the father and mother to take care of their children. And that is to teach them. Number one is teaching. The right of the child on the father is to get a proper education. Again, that has been said 1400 years ago. If you read the Risalat al Hukuk of Al Imam Zain al Abidin, he says that the right of the child is to get the proper education, proper knowledge by his father. His father and his mother have to teach him. Second, they have to choose a good name for him. Choose a good name. And lastly, of course, there are other things. But most importantly, is to get him married. The father and the mother have to work for their children to get married while they reach the age of maturity. Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. So you see, brothers and sisters.